Hey guys, today is the final day at Photokina. Now we're already back in the hotel, but we're still gonna show you what we did today, of course. So enjoy today's episode of Behind the Closed Doors at Photokina 2016, the final day. Hey guys, final day at Photokina, and we're just walking around. We have a meeting soon, and we just look around for some stuff that we missed. And actually, we're now at the Letco booth. And as you know, I use Letco in my photo shoots for constant lighting, but also in digital classroom, of course. And Letco also has another brand, so let's take a look at those. So, this is actually the brand connected to Letco, and this is a little bit more affordable, where Letco is more the high end brand. They have all this cool stuff for starting photographers or people in video, like foldable LEDs. And it looks really nice. And it's from the brand from Letgo. So if you're in the market for some stuff, make sure to check them out. Looks really nice. And they even have lights for your iPhone. And I think this might be a makeup mirror. So is my makeup good? Let me see. Yep, looks fine. So we're at Photix and this one is actually something you have to check out. It's a beauty disc, it's foldable. You can take this out, put an inner bevel in and you have a softbox. You can put an outer bevel in and you have like an octa. And of course you can use a grid and you can use it as a softbox and a grid. And because it also is available in the Allengrom mount, you can easily use the deflectors from Allengrom. So check them out. Really cool stuff from Photix. It's actually called the Spartan Beauty Dish. So check it out, really nice. At the Rogue Expo Imaging booth, and this is a product that I absolutely love that they're gonna release very soon. It's a silver, super soft silver, so that's the same material as the Frank Doro Flash Bender, and it's a rectangular reflector. Now this is something that I've been asking for for a long time, because whenever you do a portrait and you have a round one, you always spill a lot of light, and you don't get the light exactly on your model. This is the perfect shape and it's really cool that it's now finally on the market. So I have one that I've been playing with for the last few months and I can tell you it works flawlessly. So check them out, Expo Imaging, the rectangular reflector. Guys, you know I love analog photography, right? And those Leica R lenses, M lenses, M42, they're great, but you have to manually focus them. Now, a while ago I saw a company online that actually brought a converter out that can manually focus lenses convert into autofocus lenses and at Photokina we found them and here's the product and it's working it's absolutely awesome so I'm sure I'm gonna try one out very soon and I'm already over the moon with it because now you have that really nice vintage quality in autofocus so let's take a look at the product so here we have it on the Sony and as you can see it's a converter for the Leica and it works really well so you pre-focus it a little bit over 50 mil and this doesn't work, of course, but I will show you guys very quickly how it works. And it's pretty snappy. It's not as fast, of course, as a new lens, but it's very, very nice and snappy. Absolutely love this. So check them out. And I'm sure you're gonna love it if you're into analog photography. Okay, we're here at Canon. Absolutely gorgeous booth. And here we have the Panasonic booth. With Jane of the Jungle. And the reason I do it is not to sort of, you know, only show off the phone, it's also because I want to get in there with what's happening. Here we have Zeiss, awesome glass of course, works great on Sony's. And they have a really cool new lenses out, so make sure you check them out online because this is the last day at Photokina. So when you see this, you can't go to Photokina anymore. But here we actually have some of the lenses. So what happened with that, she's going to tell you all about. She's also going to give you some useful... At the 
Nikon booth. Olympus hard at work, cleaning sensors and cameras. And there we have Leica next to Hasselblad. Really nice small medium format camera. <laughs> he looks tiny. He's João Carlos and he's an amazing photographer. And well, I don't know what's going on here, but he's gonna come to professional imaging and he's gonna be on the live stage. So make sure if you go to professional imaging you check him out. And so can you tell a little bit about yourself? Hey guys, so my name is João Carlos and I'm a commercial advertising photographer. I shoot a lot of fashion. I live between New York and Europe. I'm based out of Lisbon, Portugal at the moment. I travel the world. I photograph amazing women in amazing locations and it's a tough job but somebody's got to do it. Sounds very familiar. Yeah, you know it. Hmm. <laughs> hey, so check him out on Facebook. Bye guys. And check him out on his website. We'll put it below. See you at Photo Imaging 2017. And professional imaging, of course, 2017. That's what he meant. Oh yeah, professional Doesn't imaging matter. 2000. It's, it's been a long day. Yeah, it's been okay now. Very, very long. And well, it's tiring. So, see you guys. So here we have another small Hasselblad camera. The true zoom. And it has onboard strobes. Strobe. Flash. And the X1D. For all you guys who like cubes, it's not a loom cube, but this is actually the Hasselblad cube. They probably call it the V1D. There we go. It's a daring concept, I think. The bridge is the modern with the old fashioned. Hey guys, so I'm here at Isolite and this is something you really have to see. As you know, I love educational and I love stuff about lighting. Now this will literally probably change the way that you look at lighting. So, can you introduce yourself to our viewers? Hi, I'm uh, Robert Arndt from Canada. I'm the co-founder of Isolite and Chris Gurgley, the inventor and CEO of Isolite. We're here at Photokina presenting our product and we expect to launch in two or three weeks. Awesome, so now look at the screen. You actually see somebody. There's a lot of reflections, but still we try to do it. Let me see, maybe. Well, guys, I hope you can see it. We're just gonna put it under an angle a little bit. There we go. So we have a model without any lights on her. So here we have our, our hardware encodes the light and then our software decodes it, producing a raw DNG file, allowing you for the first time to relight your photograph after the photograph is taken. So can selectively relight the photo. Yeah, I hope you guys can see this because there's a lot of reflections, but he is actually relighting the photo now, which is, if you want to do this in real life, you have to use a lot of flagging and absolutely stunning technique. Let me see if I can get a better image like this. There we go. So you can see, like, in this case, you can build up the light so you can have a softer light to a harder light, or I should say brighter, and to do that with a single strobe, as this one is, is off left to the model, would, would be almost uh, impossible. It would be impossible to flag this. And the only yeah. thing you need on your strobe is a little device like that. It's a hardware. Yeah. It's hardware. Yeah. Absolutely stunning. Thank you so very much for showing this, and I hope that soon we'll do a review on this. And uh, please, uh, Go to www.isolite.photo, it's the demo site. So you have to click on the logo to cycle through other images to play around. And by all means, at the bottom, you can sign up to subscribe to our launch. We're going to be launching on uh, Kickstarter in two or three weeks' time, and we'd love to inform you. And uh, you can see more specs during that time explaining the product better. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. One of the products you saw today was actually Isolite and it's really weird to explain to you guys what it actually does. Now it seems to be shooting one frame without the lighting and then later on you can put the lighting in and of course you can do it like this, just move your mouse over it so now you can actually see the lighting which is a great educational tool of course because now I can show people what lighting does but you can even, and this is maybe even more interesting use a brush and you can actually paint the light in. 
so you can put the light anywhere you want so this is very interesting now the brush in the version that I saw actually could be changed in size you can do that online I think now and you can change it in softness so the software I saw there was way more interesting than this but overall oh wait a minute here we can change the size of the brush so one moment let's take the brush out do the brush in and make the size really small and now what you can actually do is for example just paint the light like this now if you would have flagged this during a photo shoot just like Ben told it's very difficult so you can get some really cool effects with this now I still have to think about how I'm going to use it or with what but I think as an educational tool it's really cool to explain to people what lighting does and how you can adjust lighting and of course show you a shot before and after so make sure you check them out it's on isolight.photo so as soon as I have a test version I will show you guys again but for now this is really interesting now one of the products you saw in yesterday's video is actually the new Case Air from Tether Tools. Now this one is going to change the way you shoot tethered because you can now shoot tethered wirelessly to your Mac PC or your iPhone and iPad and you can also control your camera and the price is actually way below the competition so this is a really really cool device the only problem is I wanted to test one but there was only one available they will be available on November 1st and it first only for Canon and Nikon and Sony will follow later and well there was this moment where Josh and Lauren didn't look and that was way before the end of pho for uh, Photokina and what I did actually and we talked to them and very quickly here we go this is the only one in the world in the hands of a photographer so look at it really nice and close because you're not gonna see one before November 1st this is the new case air and of course they know I have it and I'm gonna test it for them I'm gonna field test it with a Canon because it doesn't work on Sony yet and we're gonna do this next week and also film a video for it so case air without any doubt one of the things that I was really looking forward to grab my hands on and as you can see it's in my hands now and I'm gonna test it next week and we're gonna show you of course in behind the closed doors but also in separate instructional videos really really cool product by Tether Tools available November 1st okay now as you know during digital classroom I have a wireless mic with me and we use a Sennheiser system which I absolutely love great quality and well they just run everywhere we take them worldwide with us and they always work now you guys have been asking can you have a little bit more interaction with the model or with Nadine or do interviews or whatever during Digital Classroom and of course the other person also has to be mic'd up now Digital Classroom is a free program and the Sennheisers are pretty expensive so we didn't want to buy another Sennheiser and on Photokina we actually found a product which they claim is just as good as the Sennheiser now I don't think that's true because well there's a huge price difference but these retail for about 200 euros it's a wireless system and to be totally honest we tested it on the floor there and it worked up until 30 meters and that's pretty impressive because a trade show floor like Photokina is incredibly difficult for stuff like this so it's actually a Boya system I have it here and it looks pretty nice it's pretty lightweight it has a microphone and a transmitter and a receiver so we're going to be testing this one the coming week to see if it's good enough for digital classroom but again we tested it on the Photokina floor and it worked flawlessly so for this price point incredibly interesting so if you're into audio and you want to have something and you don't want to spend the money on the Sennheiser get this one but again wait a little bit until we tested it but what we know for now it works flawlessly and by the way this is the back of the box and as you can see it's a UHF they also had 2.4 gigahertz systems on other booths but to be honest I don't trust it because especially on trade shows there's a lot of Wi-Fi traffic and the 2.4 gigahertz system is very very prone to noise and to problems with interference so it looks pretty cool keep updating my social media with information on this one also visited our friends from Black Rabbit and we got this really nice strap for Anna Week. 
and she can now carry two cameras because she always has her video camera with her and lately when I'm on stage she also wants to film a little bit of material for behind the closed doors with this camera and you can hold it in your hand but one time that will go wrong of course so now she has a strap where you can actually put two cameras on and if you don't use it you can simply unlock this and remove that strap so Black Rabbit without a doubt my choice for straps Okay, so last night I already wrote a blog post about what I found interesting at Photokina. And I think, well, one of the things that a lot of people agree upon is Fuji. Fuji is without a doubt the winner of Photokina 2016 with their amazing new medium format camera. They seem to hit the nail on the head. It's very lightweight, it's a great sensor because I have the opinion it's the Sony sensor, although nobody can confirm, but when you look at the specs and actually in all the other cameras there's also the Sony sensor, so why not? And Fuji of course and Sony, they know each other. Uh, the Hasselblad I also hold today, very very cool camera, but in all honesty I love Hasselblad, but I think a lot of people will cancel their order for the Hasselblad and go for the Fuji, because there's a huge difference in both cameras. and also in price. The other thing that I found really cool today was actually something I read about like half a year ago. A company that made a converter which makes every single manual focusable lens into an autofocus lens. Now if I would have told you this three years ago you would have said Frank you're starving mad that's impossible you can't do manual focus into autofocus. Somehow they did it and I hold, the, I hold the converter today and it's incredibly snappy to be honest. It's not as snappy as for example a new lens which would be ridiculous and magic. But it's indeed very snappy. The only thing you have to remember is you have to pre-focus a little bit to make sure you're in that range. And then the manual focus lens will actually act as an autofocus lens. And it was pretty snappy. Comparable... Well, if you, if you work on the Sony system, comparable to the old Minolta's. So it's, without a doubt, it's not slow. It's way faster than manual focus. The other thing that I found on Photokina this year was there were less speakers, which I found really a shame, and I heard it from a lot of people. And most speakers in this case were German. There still were a lot of English speakers. But Photokina is an international trade show. And I actually think that most of the speakers, let's say 90%, should be English. And I think now it's the other way around. And I know it's a German show, but Photokina, come on, it's not really a German show, it's internationally. We met some interesting people, like you saw in the video today. And overall, great show. And I love you guys for visiting our booth at BenQ. You guys were absolutely great. So, tonight is the last night in our hotel. So I have to go to the restroom to upload this video. As you saw in the previous episode, we still only have internet on the restroom. And tomorrow we're going to drive back home. So thank you so very much for watching this episode and all the episodes on Photokina. And as soon as we're home, we're going to take a few days rest. So probably smaller updates or no updates in Behind the Closed Door. And after that, of course, we're going to pick it up. Because October 1st is the international worldwide photo walk by scott kelby and i'm gonna do one in amsterdam so if you want to join our team make sure you check it out at the worldwidephotowalk.com website thank you so very much for watching guys and my name is frank dorov i'm still in germany tschüss auf wiedersehen und auf wiedersnitzel or whatever and we're gonna see you next time bye guys